I'm joined live now in an exclusive interview from Mumbai by the Managing Director of the State Bank of India, which is India's biggest bank, Mr. Rajneesh Kumar. Uh, Mr. Kumar, thanks very much indeed for joining us. The question now, sir, that is in everyone's mind is that so much cash coming out of the banks, black money being seized by these agencies, surely that's not possible without the complicity of the banks. What would you say to that? In perspective, uh, one is uh, definitely the currency, uh, the new currency is handled at various level and the currency, new currency is received from Reserve Bank of India. After that it comes to banks currency chest, from currency chest it can go to other banks, link branches, it goes to post offices, it goes to cooperative banks, it goes to the cash CIT agencies. So there are many, many players involved in the entire cash logistics. Okay. So definitely somewhere there is a process gap which has or has been taken advantage of by some miscreants. But uh, the one thing which I would like to mention here uh, through your uh, television channel that we have to look everything in the proper perspective. I All will right. give you an example of State Bank of India because okay. uh, for State Bank of India I have the data statistics and how it is operating. So in 30 days or 31 days of this uh, demonetization, we have handled 31 crore payment transaction which gives an average of more than a crore daily if you account for the holidays. And the amount crore which has been disbursed by us is in the range of 1,40,000 crore. So 1 crore payment transactions, I am not talking about the deposit, right. exchange transactions are different, it is just the transactions handled at the branches and the transactions handled at the ATMs. And 75% of these transactions are happening through ATMs. You may and the public will find it, uh, I know that uh, there is a lot of disbelief. But the statistics which I am no. giving you is uh, absolutely correct. No, statistics. just just if you and could just repeat that just for our uh, days. If you could just repeat that for the benefit of our viewers, that what you're saying is that totally you've dispersed how much money so far? I'm talking of money now, not transactions. In this, uh, we have dispersed past 30 approximately days. no, yes. uh, approximately one lakh forty thousand crore. One lakh thirty thousand crore. ATM. Okay. And uh, number of transactions, 1,40,000 crore. Okay. So that is a ballpark figure and uh, this is over the last 31 days. And the number of transactions is more than 30 crore, uh, which uh, means that on an average, more than so how are you tying this? No, but Mr. Kumar, how are you tying this to the question? Which? How are you tying this to the question I asked you about uh, the complicity of banks in, in, in potentially laundering black money or facilitating the laundering of black money. Are you saying that the amounts that have been seized, 10 crores here, 5 crores here, is actually fairly small compared to the amount that has been disbursed? Is that the point you're trying to make? Uh, that, is, uh, that is a point to be uh, examined and considered because uh, out of one, uh, if uh, entire banking system and uh, when the monetary policy announcement was uh, uh, made on 7th, uh, the figure uh, for the currency uh, distributed to the public given by RBI was about uh, 4 lakh 30,000 crore, somewhere right. near. So uh, what I am saying is uh, that was, uh, I am not defending anyone. So that is, uh, you take it uh, for sure from me, that yes. in the financial system, integrity of the financial system is of paramount importance. I can tell you that when we used to do manual transactions for one rupee difference, we used to spend 8 to 10 days or 15 days till yes. such time that one rupee was found. And uh, I have seen in our bank people being dismissed for 35 rupees shortage in postage stamp. So any instance, whether it is 1 lakh rupees or it is 10 crore rupees or 100 crore rupees, gravity of misconduct, it is in my view is the same and anyone, be it a banker or okay, any other person but at person the same time, in the banking system let me, or let the me understand this. Let me understand this. I, I, I understand yeah, please. what you're saying. You're saying misconduct cannot be spared. But what you're saying is, if you look at it in the overall picture, now according to yeah. the CBDT chairman, the figures that he says that since uh, December of 06, uh, December 6th, 
120 crores has been seized and they found 1500 crores of unaccounted income. That's quite a lot of money. But you're saying put it in the perspective of the fact that about 4.3 lakh crores have been dispersed by banks and suddenly it doesn't look like that much. Right. So that is I was trying to put uh, the matter in the perspective. But at the same at the time s- which I want to highlight is that yes. whether it is 10 rupee or 10 crore or 100 crore. If there is a misconduct, it is a misconduct. How is and SBI, what step are you aware of? As severe are you whether you commit a crime of 10 rupees or 10 crore or 100 crore. Okay, yeah. let me ask you this. So far, uh, yes, please. as far as the banks are concerned, what we know is that there have been raids on Axis Bank, there have been raids on HDFC banks, and arrests have also been made there. Have you been made aware of any misconduct in SBI so far? No, there have been sporadic instances and uh, uh, about uh, 16 cases which came to our knowledge and uh, whether through it is uh, whistleblowing or caught uh, during our reconciliation process and Mm. all the 16 uh, cases uh, it has resulted into suspension, initiating of departmental action, filing Mm. of suspicion transaction report, filing of FIR with the police and reporting of a suspected fraud to reserve bank of cases. So our guidelines and our method and our message is very, very clear. So it is a series of action, even if, as I said, if, if I now, found a discrepancy of 50,000 rupees, these are the six actions which will be taken. Okay, but give us an example, taken. Mr. Kumar, give us, when you said that you came across these 16 cases of wrongdoing, give us an example of what exactly were these bank officials doing? How exactly were they complicit in, in this laundering of cash? No, no, no. I, I think uh, giving, because each case may be different, but uh, let me explain you the overall process, how, uh, how things are done. So that will give you an idea. So one is that uh, as far as the deposit of the notes is concerned, from the day one, uh, or not day one, day two, yes. we have a separate slip. If you go to any of my branch and want to deposit old notes, you will find a pink vertical slip where the identity of the tenderer, if it is a third party, or the uh, authorization from the account holder, that is all designed to comply with the Reserve Bank of India guidelines. Right. At the end of the day, all money, all SBNs, they have to flow from the customer account. Money would have been deposited in the customer account or till 24th of November when exchange was permitted the people would have exchanged but they would have also given the identity. So there is a complete audit trail. At the end of the day, number of pieces which are deposited in the currency chest of the bank or uh, if it is not deposited in the currency chest of the bank, it is reflected in the cash balance or what we popularly call it as a hand balance. So if during the day from the customers, if I have received, I am giving you just an example, Yes. thousand pieces of thousand rupee notes yes so at the end of the day in my cash balance or in my currency chest the number cannot exceed thousand right okay. but if it has exceeded thousand then there may be a correspondingly short amount of the new note because the overall value would remain unchanged so, so you're saying in the that entire process the process yes. is such you're saying that is so how is a, this discrepancy, is that is how we what may I'm see this discrepancy, is that, that is where potentially there could be wrongdoing. But at the same time, Mr. Kumar, it does beg the question, and more and more people are asking this, that you go to the banks, they yeah. do not have enough cash, they're turned away, and yet you find so many people being seized with such large amounts of new cash. Surely there's a problem with this, something is wrong, something right, is deeply but rotten with the, with, with the system. Yes. Yeah, Mr. Srinivasan, if you, yeah, if you, uh, if you, uh, entire conversation so far has been about that, one, the problem should be seen in the perspective. So definitely there is a demand supply gap. Nobody can say that there is no demand supply gap. And that's why the situation you see at the branches or ATM, it is on account of that demand supply mismatch. Hmm. The issue about that, how come this is happening? So. Hmm. What I have been telling you is that the, again, I'm saying 
that I am not defending any wrongdoer. So yes. that is, let us be very clear on that. Yes. I am not defending any wrongdoer in the okay. bank. Okay. That okay. you and your viewers must understand this. And uh, and I am not worried about if it is a thousand rupee discrepancy or it is a fifty crore rupee discrepancy, right. discrepancy or hundred crore uh, discrepancy. The treatment to the wrongdoers will be the same. That is what the financial integrity is called. Right. But yes, when we see on the TV, somewhere some process has been compromised. So there is a need to look at that at what stage, what process has been compromised because in the bank, in the double, uh, what you call the double entry system, the yeah. books ultimately have to balance or they will throw out a discrepancy and uh, there are ways and means to find out that discrepancy and uh, yes, because there was Mr. a tremendous Kumar, can I ask you? rush at the branches at some times if we are unable to, yeah. Can I ask you that there is also some concern, we've seen yes, now yes. this group of hackers, they've become very active, they're hacking the accounts of prominent people. They also say that they may have hacked into some of the digital systems within the banking system as well and they're threatening to expose that data. Are you concerned about this? Have steps been taken to secure the digital firewalls of, of banks like SBI? So for SBI, again, I can say that uh, we have a very strong security operations center. We have built in necessary checks, balances, processes, best of the class technology, best of the class consultants. Because SBI, we do realize that we are the largest uh, as far as the banking system and the payment system in India goes. So th there is no question of any compromise anywhere, but we are living in an interconnected world. And I always keep on saying that uh, data security and cyber security are two big threats. And mm. each and every one has to be very, very alert. And in an interconnected world, your malware can flow from a simple device which is connected to the system. And right. uh, that's why when we are doing any technology rollout, uh, there is no way that we can compromise on the security, even if that mean it means that the, the, the rollout may not be as fast as we wish it to be, but uh, the first priority would be to secure and uh, ensure the safety of our uh, system. So, so last question I want to ask you. Uh, this thing. La but yes, uh, La the last attempt to... Last yes. question I want to ask you. I've understood your point. You're saying that yes, there is a compromise, there is a problem with the system, but it cannot be used to question the integrity of the entire monetary banking system because it's still a small fraction. But do give us, hypothetically, and uh, explain to us how it would be possible for individuals in the banks to take out such large amounts of cash because at the end of the day, they have to show that somewhere. You can't just take a chunk of cash out of the bank even if you are in the banking system. How, how would they have done that? So I really, uh, I am myself in a bit of a loss to understand that how could such large uh, uh, amounts could come out. So that probably you will have to put the question to the people who are doing it. But one theoretical possibility is yes. that uh, as I mentioned that at the end of the day, the number of pieces received over the counter through exchange or in the deposit of the accounts, they must tally piece by piece with the amount in the hand balance of the bank or in the currency chest. But in a situation like this, if somebody has uh, not followed the press, uh, process and instead of 4,000, if someone has done say a 10 lakh rupee exchange, so right. it means that uh, 10 lakh exchange has happened in violation of the Reserve Bank of India guidelines where you could have not exchanged. It can happen only through exchange, uh, no, no other way. If okay. it has been deposited in the account, it will be accounted for. And exchange was, you know, that uh, it was for some time 4,000 uh, rupees and later on 2,000 rupees. So it means that uh, a bank employee or whoever it is has not followed those instructions of exchanging and might have exchanged right. a larger amount and that would result in excess of SBNs. It will not tally with what has happened on the 
counters of the bank and corresponding amount the new currency notes would be short but it is not uh, it is it is uh, very very possible uh, not only possible uh, uh, it can be found out very easily that who has done this and where it has happened because uh, okay. even this exchange if it has happened beyond right. what was permitted by reserve bank of india and the second thing could be that there was a ceiling of 24000 and 50000 so right. if somebody has been paid over uh, the ceiling and again it is a violation so there is a rule and you violate okay but so you are saying will you leave an audit trail in my yeah. view there cannot be any instance where audit trail will not be available okay so you are saying that there is th this is quite disturbing actually the way you describe how the system can be gamed but you are saying that the culprit can be identified we hope you are right we hope that this is indeed as you say a minuscule uh, fraction of the overall uh, amounts of cash that are coming in but just going by these raids and seizures it does appear quite worrying and also you see a lot of bank officials i've just seen a, a flash that an rbi official uh, has also been picked up by the cbi for his role uh, in in trying to allegedly launder cash we'll have to see how that goes uh, thank you very much indeed uh, mr kumar for uh, joining us